Hello everybody, it's me Ross and welcome to another Insight video and Town have signed their third summer signing, Greg Lee from Morecambe on a two-year deal. I'm joined by Joel Shooter to discuss and get some insight and the lowdown on Greg. Joel, thank you very much for joining me. Let us know where you're coming from and thanks for joining me. Yeah, so I, I, I'm, I'm Joel, I, I do the uh, Shrimps Net podcast uh, for the Shrimps Trust and I'm on the, on the board there. So yeah, happy to be here. Good to have a little chat about Greg Lee. Yes, um, Joel, it's a pleasure. Um, Greg, one season at Morecambe. I want to get some insights, the lowdown on him. Um, first of all, before we get into the ins and out as a player, the, his strength, his weaknesses, I'm sure he could have some. Um, as a signing for town, what was your thoughts when you saw this um, go down? Uh, I think I, I've said publicly that I think that Greg's a player who can be a top-end League One player, and I think he showed that last season. So it doesn't surprise me that it's a top-end League One club that's coming for him. I didn't necessarily have it switch in mind, but considering I was thinking that a top-end League One club would come into him, in for him, yeah, they did, which makes sense. I know, I think it's quite a big location move for him. I think he was kind of managed in the Northwest base before, but, you know, is it like, you know, <laughs> it's a cliche, but obviously for the level, it's which are quite a, quite a big club, and if they come calling, they're probably offering decent money on a two year deal. You know, I, I'm not surprised he's taking it. And he seems excited to be there, and you know, it's a good opportunity for him to kind of really show what he can do, what he can do at the top of the division. And um, 27, good age. I always say that, good age. So he's now getting to his prime. Um, of course, joined Morecambe from Aberdeen. Um, had a spell in Scotland and also a spell in Ho Holland as well. Um, Last season, you guys stayed up. Um, your first season in League One in your history, um, finishing 19th. He, he played pretty much most of your games. Um, as a whole, how would you rate his first season at Morecambe as a season? Of course, he got released in the summer, uh, this summer. But maybe go into a bit more about that. Yeah, so I think um, a lot of Morecambe fans would agree with me in saying that we we think Greg did a really good job. He was a really good player for us. One of our one of our strongest before uh, strong performers really. Obviously, Cole Stockton was a standout, but kind of in the group after him, then Greg Lee's probably right up there, and he, and, and he did a really good job. And he came across really well in the interviews. He came on our podcast. He was an absolute delight to speak to. So yeah, he, he's made a really good impression on Morecambe fans. At the same time. I think we all kind of expected him to be off at the end of the uh, at the end of the season. It became clear relatively quickly that he was, you know, had the easily had it in him to play a bit higher up the league for a club higher up the league. And with the one year deal, you kind of look at him coming from a couple of quite injury hit spells at Aberdeen and and obviously in in, in the Netherlands. So. You kind of think, well, it looks like he's almost got a bit of a point to prove. I, you know, Morecambe, as a, as a us as a club, we don't, we're not always going to be able to sign those kinds of quality players if they're banging in form and have had a great few years. We're probably going to sign them when they've got a point to prove, which I think Greg did uh, in, in the division, and he proved his fitness. He's absolutely fine, so nothing to worry about with his injury history. Uh, proved himself to be a really good player at this level in terms of the the, the released thing uh it's un i mean obviously with these things it's always a bit unclear i mean sometimes it, it's quite obvious but it, it, i think with this one it's a bit unclear exactly where it's come from i think a lot of fans think it's probably quite likely that greg said i'm, I'm going to be looking to move on this summer so there's no point in offering me a contract so he just goes down as released uh and also, um, uh, and maybe to add to that as well, he's not obviously he's quite you know he like likes gunning down the wing basically. And uh, with, with Derek Adams back now, we've kind of got a slightly more conservative manager who might not want that quite as much from a fullback. So yeah, so and so if he's not quite fitting the bill for Derek, and we're looking in, there's there's going to be a lot of squad movement at Morecambe over the summer. And he's probably going to be looking to trim his budget where he can. That would seem like a kind of a logical concession, despite the fact that Greg's a very, very good player. If he's not quite the right style, then D Derek might see he's just better put his money somewhere else. But then at the end of the day, it could, could well have been that just Greg just went, yeah, I'm, I'm going to move on. And the club were like, yeah, fine, that's fine. <laughs> you can go. That's a good point, though, from you. As said about um, with Derek, you know, he came in um, 
during the second half of the season. And sometimes when in the summer, when it goes to the summer, he's going to be his first pre-season. He's always going to want to bring his own players in. And Greg, of course, was signed last summer. Um, and always a one-year deal is always a risk. Even if you know, a player goes on, have a great season, he's always guaranteed he's going to leave on a free. And that's what he's done. Um, let's talk about then his strength and his weaknesses. Um, what would you say is his main strengths as a, a wing-back? He's also versatile as well. We'll get into that in a bit. Yeah, uh, that's an interesting one. I think the way he can carry the ball and drive the team up the pitch is very, very uh, impressive. And he's and, and uh, you, you've seen the pictures of him, and he's a he's a he's a unit. <laughs> he's massive. He's very quick, uh, very strong. You know, he's so he can be physical. He got a good burst of pace. Likes to kind of take his man on, carry the ball forward. You look at some of his underlying numbers. I think he's got comes up quite well in that kind of those kind of carrying stats. Uh, he likes to make an impact in the final third uh, in, in, in a variety of ways. You know, he's, he likes to put in the cross in. He scored, I, can't, I think he scored a couple of goals as well, gets into the back post occasionally, which is something I think with it, such playing wing backs, you, you, you need your wing backs to get at the back post, especially considering a lot of teams will probably sit back against you. I think another big strength is he's. Amazing in the air. He's got he's got one hell of a leap on him. Like <laughs> it's really, really impressive. So you won't have anybody uh any forward sneaking around the back post and trying to dominate a foot, you know, a lot of the time it's a good way to score a goal. If you sneak around the back post and sit in the wing back and or the full back and dominate them because they're usually quite short, but not Greg, he's a tall fella. Uh and you know, very strong in the air. So he, he's really good from that standpoint. Uh defensive wise, again. Just the fact that he's very physically adept means that people can't really bully him or do him for pace. Like that doesn't happen very often. And yeah, he's he's a good tackle and he gets stuck in. So yeah, he's got he's got a lot of strength. He's a he's a very good player. And I'm actually gonna scrap the weaknesses part of it. It's more I think the best way to sort of phrase it would be is there any areas he needs to just improve on? I think that's a better word to say, not his weaknesses. Sorry, I hate to say that. Sorry, Greg, if you're watching. <laughs> um, but what's what, what's the areas he thinks he just needs to improve on? But he's still, you know, still a young lad in terms of he's 27. That's still an age where he still needs to improve on his game. What do you reckon he needs to? It's interesting that there's a there's a kind of general school of thought that he his crossing can be a bit erratic at times, and sometimes he he has shanked a few. <laughs> into the stand. At the same time, I, I saw a graph a couple of weeks ago, and actually, in terms of where he was in terms of percentile compared to the other fullbacks in the division, he's actually a bit above average in terms of his crossing accuracy. So, I think when he does shank it, it goes very horribly wrong. But actually, overall, he he finds his man a reasonable amount of the time compared to other fullbacks in the division, and he, he notched up a few assists for us. Uh, he'll mix it up with his crossing as well different kinds of crosses. Uh, I'd say the thing that maybe surprised me a little bit is obviously uh, it's which under McKenna, they're probably going to be, you. I might be slightly misinterpreting it, but you're probably going to be quite intricate building things up from the back, kind of like lots of little short passes. Uh, and uh, Greg has been, I think he admitted this as well a little bit on, on, the, uh, on his interview. I was listening to a couple of minutes of it. For this, like he he's a fullback who likes to just get the ball, go, and like he's a very kind of direct player. So in the past few years, I don't think he's done much, kind of of that slow build up play. Maybe that's something that uh, McKenna wants from a wing back. Maybe he's less interested about them coming in and assisting with build up play. And he wants Greg to be that kind of pushing forward presence. But at the same time, you know, he's technically a good footballer. So while his kind of instinct at the moment is to bomb on it's not unfeasible to think that he could be coached in a slightly different way to do different things so yeah I think that's the, the one thing that I was like mm, is that going to work out it is he's stylistically he's just a bomb on he, he just loves bombing down the wing uh and would that fit in with it which maybe I it might well do it might be how McKenna wants to go next season or McKenna maybe McKenna thinks you know he's a technically good player we'll just coach a couple of things a few passing uh, movements or whatever what have these smart football managers do uh, <laughs> and and get it sorted that way so yeah I'd be interested to see how he kind of fits into the side and how he what role he kind of plays in, in the team and the role is um, another good segue for um, us talking about he's um, a versatile man. Um, I see that he played multiple positions for you guys last season. Now, the question is, 
do, do you look comfortable playing those different positions or was it just basically a case of knees must really? Did, did you just have injuries in certain positions and you just went, Greg, you can do a job there. Um, but do you look comfortable in right midfield or, you know, where, where, all the positions he played? Yeah. Uh, so with left back and left wing back, he was pretty like for like in, in, in each role to be honest. He, yeah, he, he looked completely at home at left left back, left wing back, absolutely fine. I think he played he played a little bit on the left wing at one point. I think for a little bit of a game once in a kind of weird formation shift. Uh, I, I'm not sure he really suited left wing because he he didn't have the kind of space to run into as much because he was already that far up the pitch. If that makes sense, I think I remember Ashley Cole mentioned something about that, about when he used to play wing back in comparison to left back and not having that kind of space to attack in the same way. I think it just muted him a bit, but I, I, I think, you know, you're probably going to be carrying on with your three, four, three or whatever it was that you, you're playing. And I can't really see him being asked to play as a proper winger. So I won't worry about that. He played it right back a little bit. Uh, that was more because I think Derek, one of, one of our right backs was injured, and uh, the other right back, I think Derek seemed to take a bit of a d- didn't really fancy him towards the end of the season, so he just put Greg at left back. Uh, I think part of that was also his aerial ability, because I think Derek kind of felt that we were getting players coming in at the back post, and we were getting too easily done aerially. And Greg's a really good asset. I think he surprised me to be honest. He he was better. He looked more solid than I thought he would. Look, at the end of the day, it's uncomfortable. It's never going to be quite like, he's never going to look as good as he would at left back. But, you know, he did he did a solid job, you know, uh, was happy enough to use his right foot at times. I think he got an assist off his right foot, actually. Uh, one particularly good game against Charlton, actually, he played very well from uh, from right back. But yeah, so while I, I, I wouldn't ever say, oh yeah, just plop him there, I'll be fine. Don't you know? Don't use them unless you have to. But yeah, you can do the job there. Okay, we shall see. It's always got a lot for me. I like players to be versatile, different positions. But if you've got a main position, play there. But if you need to play somewhere else in it and you look comfortable, go ahead. Um, that is really it, Joel. Um, some great insight there. But any other business, my friend? Um, let's talk. Actually, what what sort of reception do you reckon you'll get? When it goes back to Morecambe, when Morecambe comes to Portman Road as well, um, and what what other things should town fans be excited about with Greg playing for town? Uh, I mean, in terms of reception, it won't be like welcoming a hero home because he's only a year, but there'll be definitely a, a positive and warm reception because you know he we we you know, he was very committed, he was very full blooded, he he put his all, he was one of our better players. Uh, Really nice bloke came across well in all the interviews and the podcast we did with him. Just seemed a really nice guy. Uh, <laughs> we had a fun chant for him as well, which obviously is important. It was the uh, oh, what's it? It's the World Cup song, isn't it? It's the the Waka Waka song, which is uh, yeah. If you feel free to do an adaptation of that, and that there was even somebody who got a Greg, Greg Lee tattoo on the inside of his wrist, so he might feel a little bit silly now, <laughs> but. You know, Don't do that. Never do yeah, that. Never yeah. do that early doors. Don't do it early doors. Do oh, it yeah, a few no. years. Yeah, and if yeah. he is down the line, if he's scored a winning goal at, uh, at Wembley or something like that, then maybe. But like, when he's a left back, he's probably going to be only only here for a year. It's a bit risky. But uh, yeah, in terms of what, what Ipswich Towns can expect from him, I think, you know, somebody who is just going to... who is, I think while I'm, I'm not sure how McKenna might try and coach him differently, but at the end of the day... He's still going to have that instinct to kind of drive the ball forward and, and, and be effective. I think maybe, I think one thing I did kind of occasionally see about it, which is they didn't score a ton of goals in the McKenna, did they? And sometimes, you know, when, when you're moving the ball around, sometimes, you know, if a team kind of walls itself, then it can be quite hard to break it down. But Greg should offer something a little bit different to that and that he will just kind of. Get the ball and go right, hell full of a bang, you know, push people out the way, just run down the line and have a, have a proper go. So, yeah, you'll definitely get that from him. He's full blooded, he's you know, he gives you his all definitely. Like, there's no feeling that he, he's kind of faffing about or you know, shirking. He is completely full blooded, goes into challenges properly, great in the air. So, yeah, really good asset to have at the club and you know, really nice bloke. So, he should do well there, I think, hopefully. 
Yeah, hopefully indeed. And he's a Jamaican international. So we've got an international at the football club. There we go. Um, Joel, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for that. Uh, let us know in the comments down below your thoughts, your feelings. And um, hopefully you've learned some more about Greg Lee, Town's third summer signing. I'm sure we'll speak to Joel and Town take on Morecambe. I'm, I'm looking forward to my trip up to Morecambe. I know that sounds crazy, but I'm looking forward to it. I enjoyed myself when I was there. Um, Joel, thanks once again, my friend. Cheers, Ross. Top man. There we go, guys. Uh, leave us a subscribe and a like, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.